Welcome to Wintergarten Wednesdays. My name is Alex. And this marks the beginning of the new intensive week. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Finally some company, Marco. Oh, I'm so happy to have been lonely. <laughs> of course, Martin Fishing X was keeping me company before, but this is so much better. This week, we're gonna do a lot of work on the vibraphone. As you see now, there's no plates here, and I'm going to start to work on this module, so you can remove it like this. And when it's free, you can lift it off like this. It, we're gonna spend a lot of effort on the vibraphone. It's so complicated, and now when Maris and Alex are here, and we can think together, uh, I think we can get a lot more done. I think we are very effective at those intensive week because Martin always plans a task, what we can do, so everyone knows what he has to do and we could push the marble machine forward a lot. At the moment, I'm preparing the parts for the vibraphone plates, the holders. I have to clean the edges and make a little chamfer on them so I can weld them together and that will look like this in the end. There you can slide a vibraphone plate on and this will get attached to the machine. And yeah, I have to weld them together, drill a hole in there and tap that hole. And then these parts are finished. Ah. 11 times. I made the vibraphone arms, 11 arms. You can see it down there, this curved thingy. And then the vibraphone plate holders, which uh, will take the 37 vibraphone plates from a normal vibraphone and then you can easily just pull them off and swap them around and put the notes on you want because you only have 11 vibraphone plates on the machine so you have to change the notes to play the music you want. I am working with these spring steels for the vibraphones. I made 11 of them. And why the spring steel? It's because of, you can see over here uh, and then I can tighten this set screw in the back and then I can adjust the spring steel to a certain position and then we can have this uh, spring action of, so the vibraphone plate can move. I've made these arms here. They should fit in the vibraphone plate holder but it's too wide still because mm -hmm. the material we had available it's just a little bit too wide so I'm cutting down half a millimeter on each side. I've already finished one part and that's how it should look like. And you're doing it on the CNC? Correct, because these should be quite accurate uh, because we have 37 different holders here and every holder should fit on every arm here. All the 37 vibraphone plates are unique and individual, so I needed to measure every single one of them and I put all the measurements into an Excel datasheet and I sent this datasheet over to Richard in the UK who did amazing work on the CAD model. The main feature of the vibraphone are the plates. There are 37 on the full instrument, but obviously these can't all fit on the MMX. So a key feature of the design needs to be that they can be interchanged so that Martin can produce different music. This design is only a placeholder at the moment, but you can see that it uses the parametric dimensions and base model with some simple equations. I've also modelled this as a folded sheet metal part, so that if we were to proceed with it, we could just produce the flat sheet model and send it off to be laser cut and bent. Now I am preparing the plates that will hold the vibraphone plates and therefore I have to bend up these four edges. I made a little trick, so I have always the right length. Just a very, very easy trick with two aluminium pieces and a screw that goes through this hole here. But I need the washer because uh, this part will tilt a little bit if there's no material under here. Okay, alignment looks good. Bend it. But now the bend doesn't look so nice yet. Yeah. So I give it a little squeeze in the vise here. Now it got nice and straight. Wow. And how many of these will you have to do? Uh, 37 times 4 bends per plate. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> there are some to go. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and the last one. 
Then that oh. means you're done. I'm sorry I didn't bring in the champagne. Oh. I can get a high five. What are you doing? I'm preparing the bear stock. I'm cleaning it up where I will weld it before I cut it so I don't have to clamp the part 37 times instead of only one time to clean it. And then I will cut it to length, and cutting the slots in the parts that we need, and then welding it on these plates. Awesome. And how many of these are you going to make? 37. Usually I make 38, but okay. <laughs> I'm preparing those square tubes I've cut earlier. The machine knows where the part is and it's always on the same spot because there's a little uh, burr left. Yeah. I can deburr the part I just made while the other part is made. And the time is pretty much the same. I need to clean one, so that's perfectly efficient. Day four just begun. Alex! Yeah, I've welded the first Vibraphone holder and yeah. the two part. So now I want to try if it still fits after welding. Will it fit? Let's have a look. That looks good. Oh, looks great. yes! So here I have my box with the prepared tubing parts. And here are the first 11 vibraphone nodes we want to make. Yeah, so um, Alex welds the parts and I'm just mounting the plates to the holders. Yeah. Show me what you got. I have a ball detent with a, a, that you can screw in somewhere. And this one I will screw in with some Loctite so it won't move in the future to the vibraphone holder arms. And here you can see that the ball detent comes up at the top. Now I need a plate that goes on here. Just an example plate. And move it on. I'm tightening the ball detent completely. So now it is stuck and I can't remove it. And then I'm opening it a little bit so I can slide it off. And now it can dry overnight. What are you doing now? We're opening this up because we have to drill and tap some threads for these adjustable slots that are going to support the positive stop that makes all the vibraphone plates being on the same level. I'm making four metal blocks with M4 threads and I learned something from Alex that if I make a chamfer just like that, the tap is really easy to start. And now I'm just gonna split them. Four blocks with a thread. This block with a thread is going to be welded on underneath like that. Yeah, so... Uh, I just made these brilliant threaded blocks to make it easier so we wouldn't mm. have to tap any threads in the big piece. I, I, I did my best job to weld them on as pretty as possible. Beautiful! But, yeah. but <laughs> there's a little problem. So this bar <laughs> was going to sit flush on top of this bar <laughs> when we mount them with the screws that goes through here. And we were just happily mounting these blocks right there. <laughs> Oh. This genius idea was it. Martins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Who's gonna grind them off? Great job, yes. Maybe you should get some more practice with the grinder. Okay. <laughs> Think. <laughs> you know, Alex, when you go into a dead end, <laughs> the fastest way forward is to turn around and walk back out of it again. <laughs> This is difficult to do with plywood. Like with metal, it's so forgiving though. Mm. I'm working on the positive stop. This is the bar that goes in here into the vibraphone. And these moving plates will go up against this bar and make sure that all of the vibraphone plates are at the same height. And I, yesterday I made these slots. Now I need to bend this piece. So I'm trying to make the bends repeatable by putting it at the same height always and bending it down down to the screwdriver with some spring back. 
Spot on. And now I'm gonna cut off some excess. So someone just sent an email saying that you should put in the positive stuff. We already thought about it actually, but it's fun that the viewers actually thought of the same idea. So that's the last one. So now I can finally show you when all the bolts are loose. We can adjust this up and down. Now the vibraphone plates would be this. If I move it down, the vibraphone plates would be where they are right now. And we have to put them in the correct order. Wait. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't you can try. It doesn't have to be here done. No, that's not done yet. <laughs> but it rings so long. Very nice. Okay, guys. Oh. Uh, it's in the wrong order. <laughs> Look. It's in the wrong place. So I quick! Think. So yeah. quick! This is Al Alex Genius behind here. They're in the wrong order, so I have to put them in the right order. So, ball. You see the little ball yeah, detent? Yeah, yeah. Indicates on that little thing there. <laughs> you went engineering crazy on this one. Okay, so the ultimate example of this. Yeah. <laughs> and if you pull it up. <laughs> and now you only see 11 of these, but we have 37. The other ones are lying here. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit lost. Okay, okay, because this is a selection of what you want, the, the, the harmonic... Uh... Yeah, so, so we can play any okay, scale. Okay. But I guess it was a big success getting this far in this week. It was... the vibraphone has been a huge my question mark until this mm. week, right? Yeah, it was definitely a huge process. And I think the, the vibraphone is pretty much, it's a very big instrument on the machine and also somehow the central instrument. And now when it is on, the machine looks much more complete already. Yeah, which could be dangerous to all the viewers. <laughs> because yeah. they think the but machine there, is done now. <laughs> there, there's a lot of stuff to do that you won't see any difference when you look at a machine, but they're very important that everything works perfectly. Great job as always, mm -hmm. Alex. That's it. You're free to go. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll fix Perfect. this in post. Yeah. <laughs>